Hey, 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 everyone, this is Dead Hand, and if you've been around the channel for a while, you know that I love tower defense games. I decided it was time to put my experience to good use and start a review series. First up is Go Home Dinosaurs. Go Home Dinosaurs is a fun little game. This is the first iOS port I've seen that came to PC without being all kinds of bork. Um, you do get a couple buttons on the front page that really show off it's a port, and the settings leave something to be desired, but once you get into the gameplay, you forget all about those shortcomings. It was released in 2013 by Firehose Games, and according to Steam, they've also created Slam Bolt Scrappers and Cat Lateral Damage, but they haven't returned to the Tower Defense genre since. Go Home Dinosaurs starts off with a simple concept. You are a group of gophers having a barbecue, but dinosaurs are trying to get in and eat your delicious food. It's a story for the ages, and one known as well as the Boy Meets Girl story and the Coming of Age tale. Since this is a mobile port, you don't get a whole bunch of cutscenes or dialogue, but you end up getting one really pretty panning shot of an incident at the barbecue involving steak and dinosaurs each chapter. Granted, the artwork is really well done and super cute, but ultimately there's less story here than in a Mario game. That fits pretty well with the genre, but if you need to get invested into a game's story uh, to really enjoy it, then I would suggest you steer clear. I seriously doubt you're playing a tower defense game for the story anyway, but I figured I should mention it with this being a full-blown review and all that jazz. Once you get into the gameplay, Go Home Dinosaurs really shines. This will have to be categorized as a roadside tower defense game, but it's also a puzzle game. And no, I don't mean a puzzle game in the same sense as every strategy game. I mean your towers come in certain shapes, like Tetris pieces, but of all different sizes. You need to figure out how to fit them all together to get the most out of your towers with the real estate given on each map. If you say you have a six block area, do you go with one big tower that doesn't really fit perfectly, leaving useful blocks unused? Or do you shove in three smaller towers that fit just right, but might not have that certain ability you really need in the limited space you have? Luckily, each individual map lasts anywhere from 45 seconds in the very early game to just under five minutes near the end. You can always go back and try new strategies without there being a huge time investment. Also, you get to see the map and pick your pieces before you start dropping towers down. So you get to lay eyes on the entrance, the exit, and any breakable obstacles that might be in your way. With this foreknowledge, you get to pick the pieces you think will fit best, and the pieces you think will produce the dinosaur killing outcome you're looking for. There's the basic two block gun tower that every tower defense game gives you as a starter weapon. There are a three piece and five piece set of slowing towers. You have the stronger variant to the basic tower that is twice the size of the original. You get neat little miniaturizing towers and teleportation towers. But you also get access to a giant seven piece tower that calls down meteorites to lay waste on your dinosaur foes. At this point, it's time to teach those greedy dinosaurs what manners are. And if they think they can just walk up to your grill and take a slab of steak off without some kind of fight, they've got another thing coming. But you aren't just confined to towers filled with gophers. You also get access to a number of power-ups that help cause the extinction of those thieving dinosaurs. Most of these power-ups revolve around your main gopher that I haven't even mentioned yet. This game has a pretty fun resource gathering mechanic uh, in where you control one gopher that must collect coconuts to power the towers and special moves. Obviously because gophers love coconuts. I'm pretty sure I read that in a book somewhere. So if you choose a certain power to use during a map, then you can cause your main coconut collecting gopher to throw fireballs, snowballs, spiky exploding balls, or he can even get his own crew of robotic Power Ranger lookalike clones to really up the count of things being thrown. These power-ups don't usually turn the tide of a losing map. Your towers can easily pick apart all of the dinosaurs coming to take your steak with little help from the main gopher. But, if you watch my Go Home Dinosaur series, you notice I always like to have one power-up as a backup just in case a dino explosion causes a few dinosaurs to jump past my towers. What's that? I also didn't explain dinosaur explosions yet. A dino explosion is a dirtbag move the game tries to throw at you on certain maps. They aren't super common, and usually you only get one per map if it has any at all. But there are a couple maps that make Dino Explosions their gimmick, and they'll contain a string of four or more. As you can see, Dino Explosions appear on your map progress bar, and when they occur a large group of dinosaurs jump past the first quarter or more of your map. Front loading your map with towers, when you see a Dino Explosion coming, is just asking to fail. The main flaw with Dino Explosions is that you don't get to see them on the level preview. So occasionally they'll ruin your plan as soon as it starts. 
Again, luckily each map isn't too long though, so you don't usually waste more than a minute or two before you get to try again. Of course, if a dinosaur does reach your barbecue first, he'll find a defensive stick of a dino Eh? Huh? See what I did there? <laughs> this will cause a ripple effect that takes out all dinosaurs in the last leg of the map. This keeps the game going and you don't immediately lose if one group of dinosaurs gets past. Usually they'll all be taken out by a single explosion and you can survive the map with at least one or two stakes depending on how well the rest of the map goes. Sadly, trying to three stake each level is about all the replayability you're going to get with this game. There aren't any in-game challenges or mini games to go over, but Go Home Dinosaurs does have 26 achievements on the Steam version that I played, so you could try to earn all of those. Outside of that, and earning enough coin after each map to buy all the power-ups and cosmetic skins, uh, there isn't much reason to play Go Home Dinosaurs all that long. I managed to get about 6 hours out of each of my two playthroughs, but since I'm not a completionist, I didn't end up grinding for those last few Chivos or trying to get those last 11 stakes that I just couldn't quite save. Overall, Go Home Dinosaurs does have decent tower and enemy variety, and there's such a small overall time investment that it doesn't really outstay its welcome or get stale. Play it for a couple of hours a day and be done in a weekend. My overall recommendation for Go Home Dinosaurs is a soft buy. Please don't buy this game at its $10 asking price on Steam. It's definitely not a required piece of the tower defense pie, but pick it up when it routinely gets down below $5 during one of those big Steam sales and have a fun weekend. I hope this review helps you out. If so, please leave a like down below, comment if you've played Go Home Dinosaurs, and let me know what you thought about it. Also, make sure to subscribe if you love tower defense games as much as I do.